welcome students to this video and in this uh, part we are going to do something called a periodic linear system yes so what does it mean so let us consider this problem consider x prime equals to 80 times x this problem yes and let us assume that it passes through x naught at the point t equals to 0 the curve now you see by Picard's existence and uniqueness theorem we have already looked at this problem right that if a is continuous so if a is continuous what does it mean it means that all you know entries of the matrix a are continuous yes in whatever interval i some interval i then you have the existence of a global solution right so there exists a solution which you know satisfies the equation for all t in i so there exist then there exist uh, x clear satisfying satisfying the problem let us put this problem as p p for all t in i of course which contains zero clear so that is always there now the thing is this so this is fine but you know if a t now see for a t equals to t yes if a t is identically equals to a let's say so that's a constant matrix yes constant matrix then we know constant matrix then we know that this solution will be given by x of t is nothing but e power a t times x naught yes but this is not true so please remember this is not true not true in case of in case of uh, variable coefficient right variable coefficient but the thing is so can we say something more if you have a variable coefficient problem that's the question yeah so what we are going to do now is to see uh, we are going to for this problem for this video we are going to consider so we are going to are going to consider a much more general problem okay going to consider a, consider the problem x prime equals to a t clear so a is a variable coefficient uh, matrix n cross n matrix plus b of t is this okay right so this is the problem which we are working with and let's call this problem as p uh, prime clear where where we will assume that a and b have continuous entries have continuous entries in some interval yes continuous entries in some interval i so all the entries are continuous that is what we are assuming here now the thing is this the question is this we know that there is a solution right we know that there is a solution for all t in i that is fine yes but the problem is this if you put some more conditions on at so if one imposes one imposes more conditions conditions on a and b on a and b can we derive can we derive something more something more is this okay so what i'm trying to say is this can we say something more about the solution if we put you know more conditions on the coefficients of course we uh, i mean that's that's just uh, i mean our hope right that if you put some more conditions on at some nicer conditions on at and bt then of course we hope that the solution will also reflect reflect that uh, generosity right so okay so on what we are doing going to do here is we are going to look at uh, linear systems which are periodic i will go i'm going to explain to you what all of this means so essentially first of all we, we start with the definition definition so what is the definition so this you know, we will put it this way a function a function y of x clear some some function uh, y of x is called periodic called periodic yes 
ऑफ पीरियड ऑफ पीरियड लेट से डब्ल्यू पॉजिटिव ओके इफ फॉर ऑल x इन द डोमेन वॉट एवर द डोमेन ऑफ वाई इज यस फॉर ऑल एक्स वाई ऑफ एक्स प्लस डब्ल्यू इक्वल्स टू वाई ऑफ एक्स क्लियर ओके सो जियोमेट्रिकली वॉट इट मीन्स इज द ग्राफ ऑफ वाई एक्स रिपीट इट सेल्फ इन सक्सेसिव इंटरवल्स ऑफ लेंथ डब्ल्यू दैट्स वॉट इट मीन्स क्लियर ओके सो इट इज बेसिकली रिपीटिंग इट सेल्फ एंड एज एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ कोर्स यू गाइज नो दैट साइंस को साइंस देर आर लाइक पीरियडिक फंक्शन एंड वॉट इज द पीरियड टू पाई ओके so for example we know that sin of x cosine of x yes see i am writing here x don't get confused or maybe i think it is better to put it this way so let me just change the definition a little bit let me write it as y of t yeah so you should don't get confused that's why otherwise it's not a problem everything is same so sin of t let's say or cosine of t they are all two pi periodic periodic right okay so what does it mean it means the sin of x plus 2 pi is nothing going but sin of x again cosine of 2 pi plus x is also going to be cosine of x right fine now you see the thing is this and of course we are going to assume so you do realize that i can is this w is not unique right okay so what we are going to do is for now for our convenience we are going to choose the w as the smallest possible such number for which this holds Yeah. Okay. So that is what we are going to call that uh, this thing, the period. Now the thing is this. Let's say if if each component component. Okay. So this is kind of a remark one. Let's just put it. If each component x i of t. Okay. One less than i less than n. Clear. Yeah? Of x of t. and each entry entry aij okay of t for 1 less than i j between n clear of the matrix a matrix a clear r periodic r periodic of period 2 pi oh sorry of period w is this okay then then x of t and a of x sorry a of t clear are said to be Are said to be periodic, periodic uh, of period W. Period W. Is this okay? So essentially, uh, what I mean by this is, you see, let's say A is a matrix, right? And it depends on T. Essentially, you see. a matrix has all these entries and all these entries depends on t so if for every entry is a function of t so as a function of t if that is basically periodic of some same period huh? the period has to be same w and again the solution let's say the function which you are talking about the unknown function x of t that is also like all the components are like uh, periodic function then we say that uh, basically those are periodic of period w that's just uh, um, what you understand by period okay now you see periodicity is a very very important uh, aspect of study yes why because if you if you uh, think about it properly you see what does ode do when we study a system or if we study an equation essentially what we are trying to do is we are trying to you know model a situation right so that's the thing model physical situations physical situations now if you think about it carefully most physical situations which we deal uh, with are generally periodic so in, for example let's say the motion motion of planets 
or sun, moon, whatever, right? The motion of planets. Or let's say in biology, our heartbeat. Yes? Heartbeat. Or let's say the growth of our hair, let's say. Yes? So, as you understand, most biological features or, you know, the, um, let's say space science also motions of planets, okay, or pendulums and all, all these motions are generally periodic motions, clear? Okay, so it is actually makes sense to study the periodic systems, okay, and that's the idea of studying this. Okay, so first of all, we are going to do this theorem, it's called the necessary necessary and sufficient condition and sufficient conditions for p prime clear what is p prime x prime equals to a t times x plus b of t clear p prime to admit periodic solution okay and i will put it like this w periodic solution w periodic solution what does what does this means it means that uh, you, it has a periodic solution of period w right w periodic solution so let us give you the necessary and sufficient condition for this thing to happen yeah so first of all uh, this theorem what is the theorem says it says that let the matrix A of T, the matrix A of T and B of T, okay, are continuous, are continuous and W periodic, W periodic. Okay, I hope you understand what it, this means. It means that let's say A is a matrix, N cross N matrix, right? So all the entries are essentially a function of T. They should be continuous and W periodic. And the same holds for B also. It's a N cross 1 matrix. And for that, uh, every entry has to be continuous and W periodic. Clear? In R. In R. Clear? Then, P prime. Here, this P prime, this this problem, P prime, X prime equals to 80 times X plus BT has, has a periodic solution, has a periodic solution, X of T of, has a W periodic solution, let, let us put it this way, has a W periodic solution, X of T. If and only if x of 0 equals to x of w. Is this okay? That's the theorem. So essentially what it is saying is this very very plain simple. See, think about it this way. Let's say p prime is this equation, right? x prime equals to a t times x plus b of t. Yes? If a is periodic, b is periodic, you expect your solution to be periodic, right? Kind of. Yes? So that is what is happening here. So it is saying that if you have a solution, okay, uh, W periodic solution. So basically what it is saying is this, if you have a W periodic solution, of course this is happening. You see, this is the definition of periodicity. X of zero has to be X of W, right? So there is nothing to prove here. But the other part is also true. So what it is saying is this, if X of zero equals to X of W, if you can show just for two points, just the two points, yes? The curve is closed essentially. So basically what you are sh showing is this. You are basically looking at the curve, right? And you are showing that the curve is closed. So basically at the point t equals to 0 and at the point t equals to w, the curve comes back to itself. If that happens, so if you have a closed curve, then the solution is going to be periodic. Yeah. That, that is the just the, you know, that is what you expect, right? So if you have a, a solution which is like a closed curve, so what happens? It will again go on doing the same thing, right? So basically it is going to be periodic. So that, that's the idea essentially. Okay. If you have the system which is the system is uh, periodic. So basically A and B are no W periodic. Then the solution which you are going to get. Yeah. You will be W periodic if and only X0 equals to X W. Okay. So let's look at the proof. proof. Of course, if X0 equals to, you see, if it is a W periodic solution, you see, if X is W periodic, let's say, yes, 
periodic then x of t plus w equals to x of t for all t right so therefore for t equals to 0 also it is true and hence x of w equals to x of 0 so that's just trivial right okay so conversely now the important part conversely what happens is this let's say let x of t be the solution be the solution of p prime is this okay yes and satisfying 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 x0 equals to xw is this okay see now I, we are assuming that x is a closed so essentially at the point 0 and at the point w uh, it is basically the same yes then we are going to show that if it is a solution it has to be w period right yeah okay so to do that what happens is if we define v of t is nothing but y of t sorry let me put it like a y of t huh? it will be much better to put it this way x of t plus w if we define it like this then that will imply you see since x is a solution of this problem then y also solves this problem see y prime of t is nothing but x prime of t plus w clear uh, this is just a chain rule right chain rule now if this is the case and what is x prime of t plus w it is nothing but a of t plus w and then x of t plus w plus b of t plus w i hope this is clear yes see the, the, if x is a solution of the problem so it satisfies the equation for all uh, points right in the interval so basically this is um, t plus w is some point right so we can just substitute it by t plus w now you see this is what this implies is since a is a and b they are you know um, w periodic it is given you see a and b are w periodic so a of t plus w is nothing but a of t and what is x plus t x of t plus w it is nothing but by definition it is y of t so it is y of t plus what is b of t plus w again it is b of t that is just the given okay since a and b are w periodic this happens so you see you have a problem such that so therefore what does y do y prime of t equals to a t times y of t plus b t clear and moreover and moreover y at the point 0 what is it it is x at the point w right and x at the point w is given to be x at the point 0 so that is what we have started out with right so it is x at the point 0 so you see y and x both satisfy the exact same equation right yes see note note x and y satisfies the exact same equation satisfies the size of p prime that is the huh? exact same equation means p prime satisfies p prime and at the point 0 x equals to x and y are essentially same okay what does that imply then the, of course since the solution is going to be unique then it implies x of t has to be equals to y of t there is no other way and that will imply what is y of t it is nothing but x of t plus w this should hold for all t right in whatever interval it is this should hold for all t so that is implies that x is w period i hope this is clear okay so you see if you do not have to worry about periodicity so once you have the coefficients of periodic you just have to check that there are two points 0 and w yes if x you know are same x basically achieves the same value at the point 0 and w then you have a periodic solution of exactly that w w periodic solution here yes? okay so now we are going to look at a corollary of this theorem so let a of t be continuous and w periodic 
continuous and W periodic. W periodic in R. Clear? Further, let let phi of t be the fundamental matrix fma so basically it means it's a fundamental matrix okay of x prime equals to 80 times x clear then p prime has sorry not p prime uh, this problem x prime equals to 80 times x okay has a non-trivial periodic solution has a non-trivial periodic solution okay uh, actually w periodic i should write it as a non-trivial w periodic solution uh, let me put it this way w periodic solution x of t if and only if determinant of x of 0 minus x of w is 0 is this okay yes so basically what it is saying is this if you have a periodic system so for now if A and B are periodic, let's just call those systems as periodic system. This is a corollary and this corollary is not about the inhomogeneous problem but for a homogeneous problem. So basically let's say x prime equals to 80 times x is the equation given to us, right? The homogeneous problem that is. And you have a fundamental solution psi of t corresponding to that. Now you see what it is saying is this equation of course zero is always the solution of this homogeneous equation that is given but the thing is you can also have a non-trivial solution yes and the solution will be periodic also if and only if the determinant of x0 minus xw the fundamental solution huh? and evaluated as zero and evaluated at w you look at that matrix if you take the determinant of that matrix that has to be zero yes now this looks a little complicated but the proof is extremely easy let's look at the proof of that proof see the thing is for this problem the general solution the general solution of x prime equals to 80 times x is given by is given by x g let's call it the general solution is nothing but if you remember it is psi of t times psi is a n cross n matrix right fundamental matrix times as a constant c and this c is a n cross 1 constant matrix constant matrix huh? constant matrix okay now you see what do we need to do i if if this um, you know solution yeah if one of this solution is a w periodic solution yes so see if let's say x of t x g of t is w periodic for some particular constant yes for some constant essentially okay is w periodic of course that will give you if and only if condition right what is if and only if condition if phi of 0 times c equals to phi of w times c okay this is always true why it is true because of the earlier problem you see if this in this problem if you take b to be 0 essentially it's saying there is a w periodic solution problem has a w periodic solution if and only if x0 equals to xw right so this problem has a w periodic solution okay so let's say x is a w periodic solution huh? this that's the general solution but there is a w periodic solution if and only if x of t equals to x of w x of t has to be x of w okay and that will imply phi 0 times c is phi w times c yes yes what does that imply that will imply the system the system 
phi 0 minus phi w ok times c is equals to 0 has a non trivial solution non trivial solution is this ok yeah uh, why is this true because you see this w periodic solution which you have this is non trivial we are assuming huh? non trivial ok so this system must have phi 0 c minus phi w c that system have to have a non trivial solution clear otherwise this is going to be 0 right ok so it has to have a non trivial solution but for this system to have a non trivial solution what is the requirement that will imply that so it is both if and only actually that will imply the determinant of psi of 0 minus psi of w has to be 0 otherwise this system cannot have a non trivial solution that's just the basic you know system of linear equation stuff right if this system if the determinant is non zero then this system has a unique solution right this system will have a unique solution and the unique solution will be given by c equals to zero yeah but since the system has a non trivial solution yes c not equals to zero essentially so basically you know there um, there is one entry which is non zero so uh, hence this has to be true this is okay so what did we prove we proved that the homogeneous system please remember this thing this is for a homogeneous problem the homogeneous system admits a non-trivial w periodic solution xt if and only if the determinant of x0 minus xw is going to be zero i hope this is clear to you okay now uh, let's look at another corollary so let's say this is corollary one let's look at the corollary two So what is it? It says that let's say that uh, A and B are continuous. Huh? So let A of T and B of T are continuous and W periodic continuous and W periodic periodic in R. This is what we are assuming. Yes then p prime the problem p prime this problem what is it p prime is uh, where is the p prime p prime uh, x prime equals to 80 times x plus bt yes this problem has a unique periodic solution unique periodic solution solution okay w periodic solution W periodic solution if and only if if and only if x prime equals to 80 times x ok does not have a periodic solution other than the trivial solution ok so if this uh, if a x prime equals to 80 times x does not have a periodic solution W periodic solution ok does not have a W periodic solution other than the trivial solution the trivial solution ok so it is a beautiful corollary actually see what it is saying is this yeah we want to know that if you have a w periodic solution which is unique for the system right you have a inhomogeneous system and we want to see whether there is a unique w periodic solution what you can actually prove is it's an if and only condition that if the homogeneous system does not have a w periodic of course you see the homogeneous system has the trivial solution which is always w periodic or any periodic for that matter right so that's not a problem but the thing is if it does not have a non-trivial w periodic solution yes then the original equation the inhomogeneous problem has a unique w periodic solution okay so these type of properties are called freedom alternatives freedom alternatives okay so it's a beautiful theorem right it says 
that uh, not you see this is kind of freedom alternative not exactly but uh, kind of you can think of it like this see what it says is this please understand this x prime equals to 80 times x has always a trivial solution you don't have to worry about it and that is always pretty what it is saying is this if you can show that there is no other periodic solution other than the trivial solution for this homogeneous problem then you can guarantee that the original inhomogeneous problem has a unique w periodic solution okay so beautiful theorem so you don't have to see if you have to say something about the inhomogeneous problem you don't have to study the inhomogeneous problem you study the homogeneous problem and if you can somehow guarantee that there is no w periodic solution you can guarantee that there is a unique w periodic solution for the inhomogeneous problem okay so the proof maybe i can do it in the next page so proof so let's say that let phi of t yes be the fundamental matrix be the fundamental matrix of the equation x prime equals to 80 times x is this okay now you see uh, you remember if this is the fundamental matrix then by duhamel's principle we have proved this, yes, Duhamel. Duhamel's principle. What do we have? We have that x of t uh, for the, the, the inhomogeneous problem. So, x satisfies the inhomogeneous problem now. Huh? Xi is a solution of homogeneous problem is given by the solution of the homogeneous problem, which is psi t times a constant matrix C n cross 1 matrix, huh? constant, plus this part t not uh, so i am taking it from the, so let's say 0 to t psi of t psi inverse of s b of s ds yes that is two hammers principle or uh, we i mean i i am not quite sure whether i told you that this is the Hamas principle or not essentially we uh, we i think we called it a variation of parameter okay this is basically variation of parameter but uh, the principle is called duhamel's principle okay variation of parameter formula here yeah. okay so we have this uh, uh, this particular function is a solution is a solution of p prime right yes in terms of the fundamental matrix now see that if this xi okay xi of t is w periodic is w periodic periodic when is this w periodic that's the question see xi of t is w periodic if and only if if you remember x at the point 0 xi at the point 0 equals to sorry xi at the point w is this okay so what does that imply that will imply okay that phi of c see what is x i at the point 0 it is phi of 0 times c and here if you put 0 this term is not there so this is equals to phi at the point w times c plus 0 to w phi at the point w phi inverse at the point s b of s ds that's what we are going to get right okay so that's an if and only condition again now and what does that imply that will imply if and only phi of 0 minus phi of w that's the system right that's a system of linear equation this is nothing but this phi of w phi inverse of s b of s ds this is okay now you see the thing is this system has a unique solution c right see for this thing to happen this has a unique solution c yes has a unique solution unique solution c okay but for this system to have a unique solution you need the determinant to be non-zero right but for that to happen to happen determinant of phi 0 minus phi w that has to be non-zero is this okay so 
now of course the theorem holds c the theorem says that if this has does not have a w periodic solution um, then uh, p prime has a unique solution unique solution right okay so you see the thing is uh, we use this we use this see determinant of phi 0 minus phi w is 0 if this happens then there is a non trivial w periodic solution of this system is this okay what we showed is determinant in this for this problem determinant of psi 0 minus psi w is not zero is this okay yes and the thing is since this is non zero that will imply that the homogeneous equation doesn't have a non trivial w periodic solution yes so you see so you see this is an if and only condition so x prime equals to 80 times x does not have a w periodic uh, solution so basically if it has a unique w uh, this thing if the p prime has a unique solution w periodic solution yes then um, determinant of psi 0 minus psi of w has to be non-zero is this okay i think this is quite clear here fine so now what we are going to do is very very important this theorem yes will actually uh, we can use a lot this theorem and uh, for our purposes you know for studying various differential equations this theorem is called the Flocke theorem Flocke theorem okay I will give you an application of Flocke theorem also we will see why Flocke theorem is so much important okay so let us say that let us consider again let a of t and b of t b of t are continuous and w periodic that is given continuous and w periodic in r w periodic in r is this okay okay then the following holds then the following holds okay what is it number one the matrix matrix let's call it pi of t okay which is defined by psi of p plus w here yeah, is also a fundamental matrix is also a fundamental matrix of the system x prime equals to 80 times x is this okay and two there exists this is important okay so first of all what am i saying i am saying that if phi of t is a fundamental matrix phi of t plus w that is also going to be a fundamental matrix of the same system clear also you will have a periodic a periodic non-singular matrix p non-singular matrix p of t okay of period w of period w clear and a constant matrix r and a constant matrix r such that you see this phi of t right the fundamental matrix phi of t can be written as p of t times e power rt is this okay so what we are saying is this c that you can actually break down the fundamental matrix okay see the first part actually we need it for the second part that's why we just wrote the first part it's not very special the second part is the special part it says that any fundamental matrix phi of t clear so you understand what is your system given x prime equals to 80 times x plus bt this is the system given to you clear and what it is saying is this if this is continuous and w periodic this is also continuous and w periodic clear if that happens then the fundamental matrix of the which system the homogeneous system can be written as v of t looks like p of t plus okay uh, one thing uh, you don't need b here sorry you don't need b here yes sir. why am i why am i writing b here it doesn't need to have any b okay let 
let me put it this way uh, we don't need to have be continuous clear okay uh, what it is saying is you can actually write the fundamental matrix phi of t as p of t times exponential r t is it okay exponential r t so you see what is the proof and what is the speciality of p of t p of t will be a periodic matrix w periodic matrix and r will be a constant matrix so you can write it as e power r t which is like a constant matrix times t so basically you can calculate e power r t and then p of t will be a non-singular matrix which is periodic, w periodic okay so what is the proof so since phi of t okay is a fundamental matrix is a fundamental matrix of the differential equation x prime equals to a t times x right that's what we are assuming then that will imply that phi prime of t it will satisfy the matrix differential equation you remember that right so uh, one second huh? sorry yeah phi of t will look like a, a t times phi of t okay please remember this is matrix differential equation huh? not your usual one matrix differential equation differential equation okay see phi prime t is also a bunch of matrix entries okay which is a n cross n matrix and a is a n cross n phi is n cross n so basically both sides is a n cross n matrix this is a matrix differential equation not your usual one please remember that clear okay now you see what happens to p prime and let's look at what is pi prime of t see if it is a fundamental matrix yes then pi prime pi will satisfy the equation right so what is pi prime of t it is nothing but phi prime of t plus w right chain root and which is nothing but a of t plus w you see phi is a fundamental matrix right so it satisfies the fundamental matrix differential equation so this works for all t so it works for t plus w also so we just replace it by t plus w clear now you see if a is w periodic then a of t plus w is nothing but a of t and what is phi of t plus w it is nothing but pi of t okay so pi is uh, another matrix which satisfies the matrix differential equation yes uh, the homogeneous equation that is yeah and of course and of course the determinant of pi t is nothing but the determinant of uh, this matrix right psi of t plus w yeah and that is of course going to be non-zero for all t yeah it's a fundamental matrix right? it has to be non-zero okay okay so uh, what we have is uh, therefore pi is a fundamental matrix is a fundamental matrix of the homogeneous problem x prime equals to a t times x i hope this is clear now okay now the second part and this is the important part yes how do you find you see what the second part is saying is this is important in this way we can actually break the fundamental matrix in terms of a non-singular periodic matrix and then an exponential part yes okay so how do we do something like this so let's look at it okay so for the second part part two part two okay see the thing is since since phi of t and phi of t plus w okay this is what this is pi of t right so they are both fundamental matrices both fundamental matrices i i hope you remember the properties of fundamental matrices then phi of t plus w can be written as phi of t times as c for some constant c c is a non-singular constant matrix constant matrix matrix is this okay see again please remember this thing we proved uh, when we talked about fundamental matrices we told you uh, we said that any fundamental matrix c if phi is a fundamental matrix phi t times c is also a fundamental matrix where c is a non-zero uh, non-singular constant matrix right and we also showed that any fundamental matrix doesn't really matter but any fundamental matrix will look like phi t times c there's no other way 
So since phi of t plus w is a fundamental matrix, so phi of t plus w can be written as phi of t times c. Is this okay? Now you see uh, what we are going to do is this. What uh, this c is a non-singular constant matrix, right? So now we will do is this. Then there exists a constant matrix, constant matrix. matrix R such that such that C is non singular right so C can be written as e power R W what is W W is the period okay C is a constant matrix so we can write it as a exponential of R W this can always be done yes if you are not convinced you just uh, please do it yourself yes so the, I am probably I am going to put it as a part of assignment so that is there Okay. So what we are going to say is this C. C, C is a non-singular matrix, right? So what you can do is if you have a non-singular constant matrix, then you can always have a constant matrix R such that C can be written as E power R. And here that W is some number. So it's not a problem. It's just a real number. Okay. So we can just put W there. Okay. So this theorem says that if you have a non-singular matrix, then um, there exists another matrix R such that the non-singular matrix C can be written as the exponential of that this given matrix okay right so now once this is true therefore what do we have is this c phi of t plus w is nothing but phi of t times c what is c it is e power r w is this okay now we define a new function define a new function which is p of t this is a matrix a huh? matrix function that is and it is defined is like this it is psi of t fundamental matrix psi of t then e to the power minus rt this is okay this is how we define it yeah this is just a trick nothing special here okay we just want to put it in that form that is why this is just a trick so we define a new function p of t of course it's a matrix huh? which is given by p of t times exponential minus rt you can do that Therefore, you see what is P of T plus W. Let's look at it. What is P of T plus W? It is nothing but psi of T plus W e to the power minus R T plus W. Okay, we can of course write it. And what happens is this. See, this is nothing but psi of psi of T plus W psi of T times C, right? So it is this is psi of T times C is nothing but e power R W. Rw, right? And this is nothing but e power minus rt times e to the power minus rw. Clear? We can write it like this. Why? Because you can actually see that they are going to commute. So we can write it like this. And then this is nothing but phi of t times e to the power minus rt. Is this okay? And then this is nothing but p of t. Clear? So you see this matrix, the matrix which you define P of T, which is phi of T times C power minus RT, that is actually W P T. Therefore, hence P of T is W P T. W P T. Clear? Now, of course, phi is non-zero. Exponential that is non-zero. So determinant and determinant of p of t that is also non-zero it has to be because phi is a fundamental matrix the determinant is non-zero exponential the determinant is of course going to be non-zero so mm -hmm. determinant of a b is determinant of a times determinant of p so it's non-zero right so we can just write it like this here okay so the beautiful part about this is once this is done you see then phi of t can be written as e power phi of t can be written as p of t times e power Okay, so hence we proved out C P of T can be written as P of T times E power of T. Hence we proved our theorem. Clear? Now the thing, this is the important part. Okay, why are we suddenly interested in this? And that's the beauty here. See, the thing is sometimes what happens is this: you can actually reduce. Okay, so this theorem, the above theorem, remark. Let me put it as a small remark. The above theorem, above theorem, 
may help us may help us in some circumstances in some situations that is to solve the system to solve the system okay by reducing reducing it to a constant coefficient system see if you remember constant coefficient systems are relatively easy we can easily solve them right so if some there is let's say if you can find out that there is some transformation which actually reduces a uh, you know this variable coefficient system to a constant coefficient system then uh, that is going to be very helpful right that is what this theorem actually this decomposition does Floch theorem this decomposition does okay we'll see okay so what is that let's look at the theorem there theorem let p of t and r okay so what is p of t and r p is w periodic r is just constant non-singular matrix okay you remember we just do it did it here you see it's a constant matrix r and p is w periodic okay so we are just assuming that so let's say that those are the are the matrix are the matrix such that we can write it the fundamental matrix phi of t is nothing but p of t times e power r t okay then the transformation this is very important huh? so you can have a transformation what is the transformation so let's say you are given a fundamental matrix you can of course decompose it into p t times e power r t that is the flock theorem right once that is true then the transformation this transformation what is it mm, y of t given by p of t times v uh, sorry w of t okay reduces reduces the system what is the system x prime equals to 80 times x to the system you see this homogeneous see once we know how to solve the homogeneous problem we can of course go and use do hammer's principle to solve the homogeneous problem right that is always done so we just have to somehow work out the homogeneous problem what happens is this is saying that you have a transformation you can have this transformation y is given by um, what is it what did i write but uh, anyways i should uh, write it as one second, huh? I should write it as uh, X maybe, yeah, it will be better. So, sorry, what is Y? Uh, I have to write Y in another case. So, let's just write it as X of T. Huh? Let's just do it this way. Otherwise, I have to again go through that Y is the solution of that problem. Anyways, reduces the system this to the system. Uh, what is the system? W prime equals to R of W. You see that the in the, the variable coefficient system actually gets reduced to a constant coefficient okay so how do you prove it let's look at the proof so since see phi is a fundamental matrix so what is it then phi prime of t we know that this is nothing but a of t times phi of t okay and you see uh, if you look at that uh, this uh, the theorem this this relation phi of t and since phi of t is nothing but p of t times e power r t e power r t then you see we can take the derivative right so you see therefore p of t times e power r t the derivative of that is nothing but a of t right and what is phi of t it is pt times e power rt so it is pt times e power r times t clear what does that imply that will imply that first of all it is p prime of t e power rt this is from the first assignment we are using here huh? plus p of t e power rt r e power rt huh? equals to at times pt e power rt is this fine now you see what happens is this 
I can write it like this. It is P prime of T plus P of T times R minus A T times P T. Clear? Times E power R T is going to be 0. Is this okay? Now, you see, if you use this transformation, so basically what is this transformation? X is given by P T times W T. Okay. So, using the transformation now as x of t is nothing but p t times w t w t okay so see x why i wrote y there so basically x solves this problem right okay so you take that solution x and then you write it as x equals to p t times w t that's what the idea is okay so see x solves this problem right so what happens what i'm trying to say is this p so okay let me do it this way x of t is p t times w t right w t okay so what does that give, gives us x prime of t is nothing but p prime of t w t and then p of t w prime of t here now what does that imply what is x prime of t is nothing but a t times x of t a t times x of t x of t is nothing but p t times w t clear that is nothing but p prime of t w t plus p of t w prime of t that's what we are going to get right okay so if you put everything together see what we are going to get is this that will imply that p of t p of t and then uh, w of t okay uh, plus one second uh, let me just check this part p of t w of t w prime no p of t w prime of t sorry yes and uh, plus p prime of t w of t Okay, um, one second. Huh? I did some mistake somewhere. I think. Uh, so this expression is there. Okay, um, this is p prime is there, right? See, p prime is there. Okay, yeah, fine, 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 fine. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Yeah. So this will imply that this is basically nothing but it says that p of t okay and w prime plus so w prime of t that is w prime of t sorry w prime of t so p of t w prime of t this particular thing plus p prime of t okay minus a of t p of t okay and times w of t this is going to be 0 yeah that's what we are going to get right if you if you just write it to uh, if you just put it together that's what you are going to get this part we are just taking on the other side here yeah? so it is p p p prime minus a times p times wt equals to 0 yes sorry I, I just got confused a little bit okay so now you see let's let's call this as 1 and let's call this as 2 okay if you combine 1 and 2 you are going to get your result so therefore combining combining 1 and 2 1 and 2 okay uh, what you are going to get is your result which is we have we have you see this is p prime minus a p that is 0 right so what happens is we are we have that w prime w prime see p prime minus a p is minus p times r right so you just replace here the minus p times r okay so and p is non-zero 
P is a non-zero matrix. So basically, it becomes Y W prime minus R W equals to zero. That's what. Okay. So there, then that will imply W prime equals to R W. I hope this is clear. Okay. So hence proof. Okay. So what did we show? We showed that if you have sufficient, you know, if there is like, uh, if A is uh, continuous and it is W P ready, then Floquet theorem says that you can just take this you know break it up into a exponential matrix times a periodic matrix a periodic matrix times a exponential matrix and then using that you take a transformation which is x equals to p times w and you reduce the original equation to a which is a variable coefficient equation yeah? this is variable coefficient you reduce it to a constant coefficient equation yes once you do it now you see what happens is this let's say if you i give you to solve this variable coefficient equation where a is nice let's say all these properties are satisfied is w periodic and everything then what happens is if you can just break it up into this uh, p times e power rt then you can actually know what r is you solve w prime equals to rw which is easy to solve because this is a constant coefficient equation this is the e power rw times some constant right so you just calculate that once you get it, you get what the solution W is, you just put it with the P. So P times that solution will be your X of T, which satisfies the equation and you are done. Yes. So with this, I am going to end this video.